The following presentation was recorded live in Los Angeles, California for the 24th Annual Convention of the International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is tape 20. Um, can you cut, can I cut me down from here or do you cut me down from there? Higher? Yeah. Um, we're going to, we'll give a, a presentation. Uh, anytime you have a question, if you want to stop us in the middle, incidentally this is uh, festival calling. If you have a question you'd like to stop us, please raise your hand. We've got a cordless mic. Uh, don't ask the question until you get the mic. When you get the microphone, please state your name, where you're from, and then your question, and we'll address it because this is going to be on tape and there ain't nothing any worse than buying one of these tapes and spending all that money for the tape to listen to ten minutes of silence and then an answer to a question that you don't know what the question was. So it's, it's a little frustrating for people with the tape. So please uh, use the tape for any questions. Uh, I'm Tony Oxenine. This is Jerry's Story. And this is going to be festival calling. Uh, I did this one last year. You're going to find that, that this session is a lot like showmanship but then it's, it's a little different uh, than the showmanship panel in the fact that, uh, yes, in order to be a, quote, festival caller or to work festivals properly, there, a, a lot of showmanship is involved. Uh, it goes a little deeper than showmanship. Uh, one of the things that you have to establish <clears throat> is whether you're working a one-day festival, a two-day festival, uh, does it have workshops? Uh, does it not? A typical festival will have perhaps a Friday night dance, uh, a Saturday morning or a Saturday afternoon workshop, and a Saturday evening dance. The other thing you have to consider, are you doing it by yourself? Are you working it with someone? Uh, we're going to look a lot into that today as to how you do a festival working with another caller rather than doing it by yourself. Many things will be common. Uh, some things are going to be different. Uh, one of the worst things in the world that can happen is, is to book a, a festival with someone that you've never worked with before uh, you, because you don't know what he does, he or she. And if I say he a lot, I mean both. Um, you don't want to step on each other's toes with show tunes, for instance, uh, if, if the caller that you're working with has particular music that he likes to do, then... Uh, you need to work that out between you. So consequently, it would behoove you, if you're working with a caller that you never worked with before, to get together prior to the, to the event and find out if there are specialty tunes or specialty things that he or she does so that you don't do a lot of repetition. Um, one of the things you've got to understand about festival calling uh, and this, this involves a lot of showmanship in, in the, a lot of the same methods of showmanship. You gotta know that in a large hall with a large stage with hopefully a large group, anything you do, you've got to be bigger than life. The people have to see it. So showmanship really, really comes into play. Uh, if you do something on the stage, do it with a little flair. There's nothing any worse then watching a caller stand, number one, like this, stand behind a table. I hate standing behind a table. I like working with the table beside me. Uh, that way I have my whole body in front of the audience. Um, so if you can, get your equipment beside you so that you're visible, you're visible to the floor. Uh, anything that you do, as I said, if you do a gesture, it's going to have to be bigger than normal. Uh, because you want the people in the back of the hall to see you. Uh, you're going to have one shot at this kind of thing now, because if people don't remember good dances, they, they only remember bad ones. Uh, if you leave, if you leave a, a, a festival or a dance, special dance, whatever the case might be, uh, and if you do a great job, they may remember you as being a great caller. If you can do a good job, and, and they probably won't remember that you were a, a good caller, but they won't remember anything bad about you. But if you do a poor job, they're going to talk bad about you, and ain't nobody going to hire you again. So you've got to be prepared when you come in. How do you prepare? Well, you've got to program your dance. Okay. Now, there's a world of difference between programming a dance individually and programming, programming a dance with another caller. You've got to be able to work with the other caller. If, 
if we start out the dance, you want your peaks, and, and this has been discussed many times in, in the showmanship session. I don't want to get into it now unless you guys like to. You want peaks and valleys in your dance. You want to bring the dancers up, take them down, bring them up, take them down. And how you do it individually may be different than how you do it with another caller. You may want to get with this other caller and, and discuss where do we want to take this dance. You know, do we want to do we want to have them really, really dancing, and feeling good fourth tip, uh, or do you want to like maybe bring them down a little bit fourth tip and and then just really wipe them out at the end, or do you want them like leaving the dance at the end of the end of the dance? Do you want them leaving, singing a little song? There's both trains of thought on that. Neither is right, neither is wrong, or rather both are right and both could be wrong. However you want to do it. Be sure that you work with the other caller so that your goals are the same. If you come out first tip and do fisherman's luck and and then the caller follows you with with another hot dog song and then you say, well, I can top that one, and you come in with another, you spend all evening trying to top each other. And there comes a point that you can't. You know, you start going this way, there comes a point that you can't take the dancers anywhere else, and at that point, your whole dance has got nowhere to go but down. You know, you, you've got to come down some time. So if you're working with a caller, and he has the floor just rocking and rolling and jumping and stomping, you have two options. You can say, well, is this the time of the evening that I want to maintain this intense emotional level? Because we're playing with people's emotions. Do I want to maintain this intense emotional level and bring them up one more notch? Or is it time in the program that I should perhaps relax them a little bit? Uh, and, and here's where you get with the other caller and find out exactly where your dance is going in this, in this manner, to bring your peaks and valleys. Uh, and I was using singing calls as an example, but patter is the same way. Um, if it works out really well if you've got one caller that's kind of laid back and the other caller that's not, uh, as far as so that there's a difference in the tips. Unfortunately, when it's like that, one caller looks good and the other caller looks bad at some point. If you have one guy that's just hammering them and the dancers just, are just rocking and rolling and the very next tip the guy comes in, the second guy comes in and does put another light in the window. That's fine, one tip. And then the third tip... The one caller gets out, and he's rocking and rolling again, and he gets him going, and then the next guy, he gets up again, and he does uh, turn out the lights, party's over. Then your dance does what? It, it does this all night. Well, the dancers, you start doing this all night, dancers don't know what to do. They don't know if they should be excited, if they should be happy or not, because they're saying, wow, this is great. Oh, well, this is okay. And then, wow, this is really good. And well, no. And so the dancers leave confused. They don't know if they had, if they had a good time or not. Uh, and this is especially important at large events. Okay? Uh, so so get, with the, get with the other caller and work out how you're going to program your intensity level. Also, you want to get with the caller and find out how you want to program your choreographic content. Okay? I like doing, at a typical dance, I like doing a workshop, third tip. But at a festival, assuming you're going to have a workshop the next day, I don't do a workshop tip, third tip. If I'm working with another caller, typically third tip is two singing calls. And, the, and the, me and the other caller will get together and do two singing calls in lieu of a workshop tip. So know who you're working with and how you want to work around it. Uh, maybe you, the two of you don't sing well together. Uh, a mistake I hear so many callers make nowadays uh, two callers getting together on the mic, both of you singing the same notes to the same song, don't sound good. Uh, there's a session on harmony, on music, that I think they're going to be discussing harmony that maybe at the same time this one is going on. So I would, I would buy the tape. <laughs> uh, if you are going, and, and let me bounce around a little bit, if you are going to sing with another caller, know ahead of time who's going to do what part. Uh, and also, know ahead of time if you can do the other part or not. And if you can't do it, don't do it. It's better not to sing than to sing and sound bad or sing and sound flat. And, and I, I hear an awful lot of people singing flat. I hear, I hear an awful lot of people singing flat on records, which to me is inexcusable. I mean, you know, you've got a button that says erase, 
And you go back and you redo it to where it ain't flat. So you need a microphone. Okay, well, no, this is fine. We'll give you a microphone. Yeah, Bill Martin, Tustin, I bought this happy birthday thing on Royal, and the guy was flat. <laughs> it's, obvious, it's obvious you have Royal Records confused with Rhythm Records, <laughs> because there has never been a flat note on a Royal Record. I think, I think those same Royal guys that did a flat note on a Sting Record one time. I think we did one called uh, Take a Chance. It was it was bad. It was five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, if you, and and we're going to try to give you some examples of. We'll start off perhaps with with the singing since I've gotten gotten in that vein. We'll give you give you a couple of examples of where you can go with a singing call and how you can can do a singing call. Um, be sure that you both style the singing call the same way. One of the problems that I see that happens a lot with callers who work by themselves a lot, they get into a habit of doing a song differently than the way the song is was done before because they've done it by themselves and they can afford to do, go into all over the scale. Well, now, be aware, you can't do that if you're going to work with somebody. If you're going to work with somebody, somebody's got to be the straight man. And you've got to sing it exactly like the record. Otherwise, the person that's working with you don't know where to go. I run into, I get locked into doing most of the the harmony the, the harmony work a lot of times with callers because I do, you know, I I hear it. I don't know hear it. I hear it. But one of the hardest things in the world is is trying to sing with someone who is accustomed to singing by themselves. And and you're getting ready to do the tag the tags line, and this person may decide well. I've yodeled on this record before, I think. I'll yodel. Well, which is okay, except I've never heard a harmony yodel. Uh, so it, that would be a specialty song. You sure don't want to throw that in with a guy unless, or girl unless they know it's coming. Otherwise, you're going to be getting ready to do the weave the ring line, and you're going to say, my baby thinks she's a train, and, and the other person is, is doing blue yodeler number six, and, and, it, and it doesn't sound good. Um, let me show you a couple of blends between uh, a lead note and and some uh, and a tenor, which is uh, lead would be like what would hear on the record, tenor would be a, a male harmony right above it. This is a royal record. Now, fortunately, Jerry and I work together a lot, and we we swap off on the on the tenor and and the lead, and. Uh, you want which mic? You want this one? Uh, I don't care. Do whichever one you want to do. Which one you want? See, we practiced this beforehand. By email. I'll take the lead first, and Jerry will do a, a tenor blend with me. And this is the opener. Four ladies promenade a one time. You go round back home and swinging world that man. You join hands, circle to the left around you go. Out of in the corner and you weave the ring. Oh, come to the church in the wildwood. Come to the church in the veil. There is nothing so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. Okay, now, could, could you hear the... I'm singing in the lead. Jerry's singing a tenor note. Above me, he's singing the fifth above me. Listen at the difference in, in, of how this song would sound if we both sang the lead. Now, we're going to sing together. For the life of me, I can't understand why two callers want to sing together and both sing the same note. Listen how this sounds if we both sang the lead. And the reason, it, the reason a lot of times it doesn't sound good is if your voice isn't in the same octave as mine. Uh, if you're both singing the same note, it really comes across not well. Our, our voices are close to the same octave, but it still doesn't have the same effect. We'll both do the lead this time. A part point. Okay. Circle. Come to the church in the wildwood. Come to the church in the veil. There is nothing so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. Now, <laughs> sound okay? Now, now there was there was there was no flat notes, but 
But because the timbre of my voice is different than the timbre of Jerry's voice, with us singing the same note, there's a clash there. Okay, it's 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 not a harmonic. It's it's more of a discord. Uh, so, a good rule of thumb: if you can't sing and it sound well, somebody hush. If there's three of you on the stage, it's it's even more important. If there's three callers on the stage and two of them can't do parts, one of them should hush. If you got two people singing lead, one person trying to sing a part. Uh, and I so often hear guys, instead of singing a harmonic, all they do is sing high. And they, then they think that's a harmonic, and actually all it is is high. Sometimes it blends, sometimes it does. That's a lead tenor blend. Uh, let's show you a, a, a lead baritone blend and see if you can tell any difference in that. If I can do... I've never done baritone on this one. <laughs> the church in the wildwood, come to the church in the vale. There's nothing so dear to my childhood as that little brown church in the vale. You know, part of the reason is we're not singing the words to the song there, Jerry. That's not the, that's not the, why don't we do Four Ladies Chain and then Let's do the Weave the Ring thing. Okay. Let's do it like that. We are professionals. Do not attempt this at home. Ladies, promenade, you go walking around the ring. You come on by swinging over your man. That's much more better. Hey, you show the ball to your hands and you circle right along. Do it on a minute, left your corner, girl, they're gonna weave around the ring. Come to the church in the wildwood. Come to the church in the veil. There's nothing so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. So, what you have if you have somebody that can't sing high or can't do the tenor note, you can always have someone sing the baritone, which is pretty much the equivalent equivalent of a, of a woman's alto. So a lot of times, man singing lead, woman singing alto blends well. Uh, it doesn't sound good normally when the man sings the lead and the female sings the tenor because of, well, because of, the, of the timbre of the lady's voice. Uh, we could sing the same note. It's like when we both sang the lead a while ago. Although you could both be singing the same note because of the timbre of the vocal. It comes across a little shrill. Okay? Um, now, you can go even on a, on a farther limb. Um, you, can, you can do combinations instead of doing lead tenor, lead baritone. You can, do com you can do a different combination. You can do a combination of tenor baritone and on some songs it sounds okay this is one of them. let's do the first time let's do uh lead tenor and then uh and then come back in the second time on a tenor baritone okay this is not a royal record but it should have been Four ladies chain across the ring. This is the ladies doing the tenor. You turn and chain your lady. Oh, my sing. John and circle to the left around you go. Out a man on the corner of the hall and weave the ring. Oh, I gotta get a message to you. Hold on. Hold on. Now that's the lead tenor. We're going to do the same thing on, on number two, since this record's the same thing seven times through. And we'll do a tenor baritone blend on the same thing. Four ladies chain across the ring. You turn and chain your lady home by sing. Join and circle to the left and around you go. I'm a man in the corner of the hall and breathe the ring. Oh, I gotta get a message to you. Hold on, hold on. That's a tenor baritone blend. On some songs, that sounds fine. Some songs, it doesn't. Uh, when in doubt, practice first if you have an opportunity. Uh, in most situations, you're not going to be working on, on a festival-type atmosphere with a caller that you've never worked with before. Uh, in most situations, it's going to be somebody that you've known and worked with at some point so that you have some kind of idea uh, how to go along with it. 
Well, the other things now you hear callers do when they work together on one of these things is you hear one guy saying one thing and another guy saying another. You know, you got one guy saying, uh, weave the ring, and the other guy is doing a lot of ratter chatter or something behind it. That is very effective uh, on many songs. Now, what you got to know is that a little bit of it goes a long way. You don't want to do it every song. Some songs, it's like really, really effective. Uh, this will work. Okay, this one, uh, too, is not a royal record. This is a chaparral record. Now, this one, this one's kind of unique, and it's got voices at the beginning. Down the road, down the road, got a little pretty girl down the road. You start this one. I start the other ones. Now, can you hear the little syncopation in there? Uh, that adds a lot to a song, especially if you're working with another caller. That makes it kind of neat. Now, you don't want to do it every time because then you lose the showmanship effect of it. But ever so often on a song, that's just real effective. Um, something that, that you want to be careful about doing is, I, I don't know what the name of it would be. We, we call it following me. Yeah, I follow you. Yeah. Uh, and he... and. And the, the second caller repeats what the first caller says. You gotta be quick. Number one, you gotta be quick. Number two, you gotta know what the other guy's gonna say. Because usually, usually on, on this song, we'll do a little bit of it in the opener, a little bit more in the closer, and then, uh, syncopate the yeah, whole thing. By the, by the end, we do the whole thing, follow you. He's right. You, you build to it. Along with building, building, it goes along with theming your dance. Uh, a singing call is just a small part of your dance, and it's themed the same way. So this one right here, we build towards the end, and so the this is actually the opener. But if this were if this were number, this would be the final figure. This would be the last slide's figure, and he would be following me. The figure's going to be this. So in case you don't understand, the figure's going to be head square through. Do si do, swing through, boy run, half tag, scoot back, boys run, slide through, clap your hands and swing. That's the figure. So he's got to know what I'm going to say, and because so, he doesn't really have time to listen to me, you see. I hope. I'll just read your lips. Read my lips. Okay? See, no, we got to put this on the figure. This is the Hey Little Devil Circle. Hey Little Devil, know you're always running around. Hey Little Devil, you do an alabama on the corner of the hall, and you don't see the little the girl and alabama. the figure part. All right, the head oh, square the in the middle, and you muddle in the middle, and the tune in the middle of the corner of the ring, and you don't see the one time around, and you do one time Swing through, yes, you buy ten, and the boy, hey, run around a brand new honey, half tag, scoot back, and you move on, and then, hey, those boys run around a girl, slide through, and they clap your hand, swing, swing, on it, girl, and you promenade the land. Now, that's very effective at times. Um, but but you ain't going to do that first time you get together. You know, you know it, it comes, it, it, this, this works if you have someone that you work together with quite a bit. Uh, and he and I work together too much. Too much, yeah. Uh, so some of this stuff comes a little more naturally. But it's something to work at with other callers. That's something you can, you can, can try to do. Uh, and on that particular song, I was doing the lead, he was doing the tenor, but he was just repeating what I said in a, at a tenor note. And, and it gave a whole new effect to the song. Any questions? <laughs> now, you can also do 
find us a pretty one. Just get us a get us a pretty one. Um, so often, two callers get together, and one of the worst, and I said earlier, one of the worst things you can do is try to take the dancers and do this with them all night and try to build. At some point, somebody's got to bring them down a little bit. You can be very effective uh, with a with a pretty. That's a good one. With a pretty song, you can be very very effective with a pretty song. The dancers the dancers appreciate it. Uh, this one's a pretty one. Now this one's one. Uh, Perhaps a third tipper, this would be the first song of the third tip when you're going to do two singing calls together. Okay? Um, this one's a global tune called Good Time Charlie. It goes something like this. What was that? I know, that's why I'm singing the circle. Let's start over and why don't you come in at the right part? Okay, cool. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm so embarrassed. Here I go, saving your neck again. This does start. Yeah. Want to count it off for me? Circle as everybody's gone away. Say they're moving to L.A. Alabama left you no sign door. Alabama left in your way the rain. Some call it a freight, some call it a plane. Swing a little girl in your promenade. Now, that's pretty, and that's as effective as something with four boys promenade where you're screaming and hollering. Too often, we try to excite a floor by cutting the music up and calling faster and louder. Uh, and that does not necessarily excite the floor. If that were the case, you know, there, there are callers that have probably never pump the music up wide open and scream four boys promenade. I can't picture when, when we when we record records, I always I always try to picture, would John Jones do this record? Now for the life of me, I and John Jones is a very, very popular caller. Has been a popular caller for years. I cannot picture John Jones deciding, okay, I want to get this crowd, this hundred squares I have, I want to get them enthusiastic. I think I'm gonna scream I'm going to cut the music up real loud, and I'm going to jump up and down and scream Four Boys Promenade. I can't see that. But John can excite a floor. It does. Sometimes you may want to jump up and scream and shout Four Boys Promenade. Jerry's never done a dance in his life. He's never done a record in his life that doesn't end with Four Boys Promenade. But that doesn't work for me, for instance. You know, some callers it works for, because you hear... Jerry's story, do it, and the floor goes bananas, don't mean that, that they're going to go bananas for you. Uh, something else that you may want to try um, that's just really, really effective at the end of the evening. Uh, let's say you're looking through your record case and you can't find a record. And you say, well, I wish I had a record. If somebody could give us a, a, about a hundred, about a hundred and thirty beat tempo, please. No, that's 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 about one twenty six. Perfect. Hey, four boys, you promenade a one time around. Hey, come on, Back home and swing, swing whirl the girl around and round. And join hand in circle to the left around. You fly and do an alum and a lift on the corner and you weave the ring. Whoa, oh, do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? I say to do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Hallelujah, do Lord, oh, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Look away beyond the blue. Two, three, Hey, the head square through in the middle, and you muddle in the middle to the tune of the fiddle to the corner of the ring, and a rattle let through when you turn there with your date. Swing through in the middle of the night, and the gentleman you're gonna run to the right. Half tag, trade roll, look her in the eye, and then you start through the square through three, two, one. Say, swing that corner girl in the promenade, obey. I say, oh, do Lord, oh, do Lord, hey, do you remember me? Look away beyond the blue. See, sometimes you don't even need records. And that's a real, that's a real effective tool at the end of an evening. 
Uh, it's a tremendously effective tool. Once again, you could do it by yourself, and it's still effective. If you do it with another caller, be sure that you've practiced. Okay, that's important. That's important. Um, I'm going to let Jerry talk about uh, working, perhaps working theme tips and how to work some, unless you guys have some questions on music or, or on the singing part, uh, in which case we'll entertain questions on the music. We're, we'll go into some, some choreographic portions. By doing something like that, aren't you afraid of going out of business with no records? <laughs> oh, no, because we... We don't sell many anyway. Yeah. <laughs> don't make much difference. Yeah, in fact, I think what we're going to start doing is just on the flip side, we're going to produce one like that. Just have it blank on the side and just put, Do Lord. <laughs> And have the vocal on one side and, and nothing on the other. Although I've always wanted to do a patter record. And, and just right in the middle of the patter record have a vocal that says, right and left through. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, we're going to go. And one, one of the, you know, the, the music in the singing call is, is not quite or maybe depending on who you ask, it's either not quite or maybe just a little bit more. Half of what you're doing is at a, at a festival or a dance. This applies, now, you got to know, this applies to a, to a special dance, not just a hundred square festival. This applies to a ten square special dance. These guys, if you've got ten squares on the floor, they deserve the same amount of enthusiasm in your calling as if you had a hundred squares on the floor. And that's, what, that's the big reason that separates the, quote, festival callers from everybody else is that most of these people, all of these people, will come out and they're going to give you 110%, don't matter whether there's a big crowd or a bad crowd, you know, if, if the crowd's there. Uh, but you've got to have some choreography in there, too. You, you've got to have some little tricks of the trade. And Jerry let Jerry take you through a couple of little, little tricks. It's magic. <laughs> Need that on the microphone, sir? Uh... Workshops are tremendously important to a festival. It sets the mood for Saturday night, uh, choreographically speaking. Um, if you can uh, achieve uh, uh, all your plans uh, throughout the day, come Saturday night, you can take the dancers back through all the things that you showed them, and it really makes for a great Saturday night festival. Some of the things, uh, when I was first out on the road, you know, 15 years ago, I was doing what everybody else was doing. Uh, the the guys ahead of me, the, the big name callers in the, in the business, was out on the road, workshopping, relay your wing ding and flip your widget everywhere they went. You know, and I thought that was the thing to do. So I learned how to relay your wing ding and flip your widget, and then pretty soon they became plus calls. And that was a joke. Anyway, after Tony and I went to Sweden about 15 years ago to call, we come home and we said, you know what? This is the way it ought to be. These guys are really dancing the levels and dancing the calls. And you know what? It would be great workshop material if we took the calls that nobody else is using or on a very infrequent basis using and work these calls or take calls that they already know and expand on those calls. And so for the last 15 years, I think I've workshopped, recycled with a girl on the end of the wave every afternoon, every Saturday afternoon, pretty close, huh? Just one of the things that, that we try to get the dancers. Jerry, how, how do you workshop recycle with the girls on the end? Well, let's get a square up and we'll just take a look at it. What do you think? Okay. All right. Can we get a square? How about a square? Let's just start with that call right Essentially, there. Essentially what Jerry's saying is he's making a living based on the stuff that other callers aren't doing. And... And it's working. Sir, do you know how to do this? We need one more couple. Don't everybody jump up at one time. I'm not saying that it's still not good. You know, it's a great floor equalizer to, to workshop an experimental call. But it almost got to the point where the dan I felt, anyway, that the dancers were tired of it. They, they really, I felt they were tired. Maybe they weren't. But when I went the other way, I got so much success from it, and the dancers coming up saying, Jerry, that was a real workshop. You made me a better dancer than I was when I got here. They're tired of learning something and then forgetting it. and not having, it, it is fun, but I think it only lasts so long. Let's have the heads uh, step in and face your corner. All right? 
step to an ocean wave for me. You know, the first thing you got to do to get people to do an extended applications recycle is go back and take a look at what the basic rule says. It has a cross fold in its application. So the first thing I would do is, is start working cross folds, swing through. Girls cross fold, touch a quarter, boy run. I, they just practiced the first half of that call for that end dancer. And I'm not going to stop there. We're going to dance a while. You know, the best thing to do after you show them part of the trick, that's what I'm calling a trick. That, that is one of the tools that I'm going to put in my bag of tricks for Saturday night. When I get this recycle finished, I'll have a complete tool with recycle then. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Just put the wind in their face a little bit. Centers. Left square through three. Swing through. And now let's go back. I want to practice them again. Girls cross fold. I'm just programming them. Touch a quarter. Boy run around a girl. They don't even know they're being programmed. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Centers pass through. Step to a wave. Hinge. Split circulate. Hinge. Girls trade. Swing through. I'm going to go program step two now. Everybody hinge. Everybody split circulate. Everybody face the girl beside you. Say hello there, darling. Can you face her? Everybody please face the person beside you. Thank you. They've already done recycle. They've followed the pattern, the footsteps of recycle. But I'm not ready to tell them yet. Touch a quarter. I want to make sure they got it. Boys run around a girl. Pass through. Let's go play with somebody else. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. Scoot back. We've already done swing through so much, so stick a scoot back in there to mix it up a little bit. Boys trade. And once again, everybody hinge. Split circulate. Hey, turn to face that person beside you. Say, hello, darling. Star through. Okay, I think they're probably ready to go. California twirl. Pass the ocean. Swing through. Boys fold behind this girl. Girls, do your cross fold. Boys, follow her. Everybody turn to face a new person beside you. Say, hello, darling. You just did a recycle. Star through. Go forward and back. It's the accent. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. Swing through. Hey, let's practice that recycle again now, all right? Boys, fold behind this girl. Girls, do your cross fold. Boys, follow her. Everybody turn to face a new girl. Say, hello, baby. Now I have me a tool for Saturday night like nobody ever had in their life. I can do recycles to right and left grands. I can do recycles to weave the rings. I can do, and if you want to go on from there, uh, I like left recycles a lot. Especially at the plus weekends where you've got to follow your neighbor. Uh, and it's just as easy. I don't really call linear cycles so much anymore because um, I'm just trying to get away from using calls that I can use in other ways. Touch a quarter. Scoot back. Follow your neighbor. Do not spread. Got a lefty wave for me. Keep on. There you go. All right. This is actually easier than the other one for dancers. I, I really, at, at a festival, you know, I, I don't really have to prep them so much on this one. I just tell the girls, lean forward and look down behind this guy. That's the way you're going. All right. Recycle. Boys, fold and follow her. Get over there, girls. Take him with you. Sweep a quarter. Make lines of four. You're normal. And those helpful hints really help them. In case they got mixed up along the way, I give them some helpful hints so they wouldn't get lost. Pass through. Wheel and deal. I'm building me another tool for Saturday night. Pass through. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Do not spread. Right into a left recycle. Take him with you, girls. Sweep a quarter with him. Whoa, get him over there. You're normal. Get him on the other side of you, honey. Get normal. Girl on right. That a girl. All right, well, I see we're not ready to dance it yet. Let's practice. <laughs> and you know, I'll actually tell a floor that and get the same laugh. They love it because they know that I'm sincerely, from my heart, concerned about their success. And when that is conveyed to the floor, you're going to be a winner every time. Because most dancers are scared stiff when you start working stuff from oddball setups like that. And if you make a, the, the environment comfortable for them, uh, they're going to do pretty much anything you want them to do. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Let's practice that again. Centers pass through. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Do not spread. 
girls, cross fold. Go down there and look him in the eyeball. Say, hello, buddy. Do a left touch a quarter. Now, see, my judgment was wrong. I, I thought I could get him through it without going through. You thought you had an answer, <laughs> But this, this, this happens frequently, so no big deal. I call it. They, you know, they're, they're having trouble with it. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to break it down in components like we did the other one. Boys trade. Slide through. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Girls are on the end of the wave. Girls cross fold. That's the way you're going on a recycle, girls. Touch a quarter. Left touch a quarter with that boy. Boys trade. Reverse flutter. Slide through. Touch a quarter. Now I'm going to go back and see if I can put it all together again. Follow your neighbor. Girls, you know which way you're going, don't you? Down behind that boy to the left. And boys, you're going to fold and follow her around. Recycle. Take him with you, girls. Take him with you. Sweep a quarter with him. Get normal. Yeah, you got lines. Perfect. Hey, I think we're ready to dance that. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Zoom, just for something to do. Pass through. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Do not spread. Right into a left recycle. Take him, girls. Sweep a quarter with him, girls. Hot diggity dog. Pass the ocean. All eight circulate. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to see if they remember the other one because that's the whole building process. I may not put them all together in the workshop, probably once just to make sure they can, but at night you come up with some a building process where you're going to maybe stack these all together at the, for a hot hash tip. You know, you say, okay, we're going to do a hot hash tip, and you've showed them a dozen tricks during the day. All that hot hash tip has to be is all the tricks put together. That's a pretty good tip. And they're flying. They think they're really doing a lot, and they are. But they already practiced it. They already knew it. You're set up to win here. You put yourself in the best situation you can possibly be in. Swing through. Hey, remember this one now, girls. Look behind him. That's the way you're going. Recycle. Boys fold and follow her around. Face a new girl. Say, hello, there. New girl. There she is. Slide through. Everybody's looking out, aren't we? Hot diggity dog. All right. Bend the line. Slide through. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Do not spread. Recycle, Fred. Veer right. Ferris wheel. Center's wheel around. Swing through, and I'll go over to this side, and I'll do my other trick. Remember this one, girls? Recycle. Take him with you, girls. Come on. Keep him on that right-hand side. Oh, that's too far. We didn't want to sweep a quarter that time, did we? Slide through. Partner trade. Roll and yellow rocker. I don't know where you are. I never looked. All right? If I can interrupt at this point, maybe you guys missed some of the subtle things that happened. If y'all want to screw up just a second. Uh, one of the things that separates uh, festival calling from then perhaps, and, and maybe it doesn't because probably we all need to do this, but dancers come to a festival to hear a big-time caller, and they want to hear something different. They don't want to hear square through, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel, pass through, swing your corner. They don't want to hear that all night. Now, by the same token, you can't get a big floor. You can get a big floor through this recycle stuff. But the larger the floor, the less complicated you can make your choreography. If you've got a very tightly packed floor, you aren't going to get them through a lot of exotic things, especially if it throws them into, like, tidal waves or, or tidal two-faced lines or something. They break down strictly because they get mixed up in the other square. But one of the things that went on here that maybe you missed, let's have the head step in face your corner a minute. It's little subtle things that makes the dancer say, wow. Okay. Um, let's uh, touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor. Girl cross fold. Left touch a quarter. Here's where the little trick came in. Boys trade, watch this, to a reverse flutter. Now, how many times have you called reverse flutter? Tons. How many times have you ever called reverse flutter trading the boys from a left-handed wave? 
It's just a subtle little thing that dancers pick up. And that's one that the dancers will do because they fall into it. It's one of those, one of those can't miss things. But that's the kind of things that dancers expect from festival callers. You know, you can only get by so much on singing. At some point, you have got to have some choreography. And you've got to have not difficult choreography. Okay, there's a world of difference between different and interesting or different. You know, there's, there's difficult and there's different. Difficult is usually not good. Different is usually good as long as it's interesting and danceable. If you've got the best material in the world and the people can't dance it, it don't matter. And I've seen more, more guys than one just fall flat on their face trying to get a crowded floor or a big floor through. This ends the front side of the cassette. Please turn it over and begin. Fixation the other day, you really, when you start messing around with extended applications to calls, it's, it's a dangerous field. It's a minefield. I mean, if you're not used to working those calls, it's going to take some practice. It's like giving a kid a stick of dynamite. You can, you can go to a dance and really make yourself look bad, too, if you're not prepared for it. Um, well, Jerry, would you give me something good with those All right. Star through. I like to fractionalize dosi do and uh, it's a great tool. And it's a fun thing for the dancers to do, and plus it keeps them doing do do right. Everybody do do three quarters. And I want the boys to sashay nose to nose. Couple circulate. Bend the line. Star through. Do a left do do three quarters. And the girls sashay nose to nose, and the couple circulate. Whole new twist to things. And it feels good for the dancer as well. Anything else? The way the way that you get a lot of this, you guys can take a break. You've been standing up while. Thank you. Nice hand for our dancers. We'll probably get some more up. Um, the whole point now. Now you got to know that that the whole this whole routine here would be developed over the course of a lot longer period of time than what we just used there. So there's obviously a lot more material that went into that five minutes of dancing that would go on in a typical five minute tip. You know, you could actually take and make the recycle part a 30 or 45 minute workshop tip during your workshop or you could you could perhaps work it in during your dance the whole point is though is that you want some of these not gimmicks because i i don't think i don't think a left-handed recycle is a gimmick you know i think a little bit of lines of three or ocean waves of three or ocean waves of six i think that borders on gimmickry uh and a little bit of that goes a long way a little bit of anything goes a long way you can't do a whole evening of exotic material. You've got to put some wind in their face at some point. There's a misconception, I, I feel, uh, in, in our square dance society today that callers think, and I, especially new callers, and, and to, to back this up, I, I've been trying to, to mentor three or four callers across the United States so I could, I could get a better feel for where they're at. And you know where their head's at today? Every time I sit down to talk with them, they're going, Jerry, come here and help me with this flip the diamond thing. Jerry, I got this great get out with fault of your neighbor or something, you know. And I'm going, hey, you didn't listen to me the last time I talked to you. Yeah, I, I know. I know you told me to go back. And I remember what you told me to take every basic call and, and come up with, with a half a dozen applications to that from the most simple to the most difficult. And then take the most difficult and figure out how to present it so it's easy. And you haven't done that yet. And he says, yeah, I know. But if I get up there and call, load the boat, and relay the doozy in track two, they book me for, for, for other dances. And he's only been calling a year. He hasn't learned to, to call basics. He certainly doesn't know how to call mainstream. All he knows, or she knows, I've got one girl that I've been working with on her calling, same thing. They are in a trap, big trap. Because they want to go out and call for the club. And, and to be a star, it's hard to, for them to get out of their head that they have to, at some point in time, go do the work that it takes to be a good square dance caller. And to do that, you have to know your basics. 
at least six applications to each one. And when you do that, it gives you a whole bag of tricks. And, you, and when you go to do festivals or, or dances, you've got all that choreography at your disposal. And with some presentation skills, you can reach into that bag and entertain dancers for years and years and years, and they won't get bored. But if you call Relay the Ducey, plain vanilla to them, night after night after night, dancers will get bored on you, and they'll go start bowling or watching videos or something. This is, this is a good tool, and uh, we're going to talk some more about it, but that's just a personal note. Yeah, um, it's like you said, you're, you're looking at a time bomb. You don't want to get, you don't want if you've never gone into a, your club, and I would recommend that before you practice this kind of stuff on a big floor, that you practice it on your club a little bit. Uh, take one tip a night and take a call and explore it. Uh, I like to think of it as, as putting a question to what if I did this at this call? What if I only did half of it? Or what if I only had the boys do it? Or what if I only had the centers do this part? And But use it. With, don't use it on the plus material. Take your basics, the mainstream and basic calls, and learn to work those. I've seen so many callers, and, and, and they all want to become... Uh, a, tra a traveling national, international famous square dance caller and festival doer, and they put that on their card. I'm just of the belief that if it's on your card, you really ain't. Uh, <laughs> so many people ask me what a national caller is, and I think my idea of a national caller and a lot of other people's different. I think you can count the national callers on your, you wouldn't need two hands. Uh, and of those guys, I think if you saw somebody and they had it on their business card, I would say they weren't, because if you are, people know you are. And if you're not, putting it on your card ain't going to matter. Um, I don't know why I said that then. I get so much trouble saying it. Anyway, <laughs> don't, don't, go out, don't go out and just try to do all this stuff on a big floor. Practice at home first. Practice with your group. And, and the more you practice on your group, you'll find that you'll start, you'll be calling for your club, and somebody from across, the, well, across town or maybe in the next town will say, hey, you want to come and call my Tuesday night club? And you go and call your Tuesday night club. Somebody from there is from 25 miles away, and they say, hey, listen, why don't you come up and call our Saturday night hoedown next month? We can pay you $10. You know, and you say, okay, so you go there. And then somebody from 50 miles away hears you, hears you at this dance, and you do a credible job. And they say, hey, why don't you come do our association dance next year, 50 miles away from here, and we can pay you $50. And eventually, you're going to be at one of these association dances. Somebody's going to come up to you and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm from Wisconsin. We're having our state festival, you know, four years from now. And we'd like you to be our featured caller. It'll eventually happen. Callers ask you, ask me all the time, how do you become a, fe a national caller? Or they say something like, well, I just retired from my job and I'm thinking about going national. It, it ain't something you think about. It, it, it happens. If it happens to you, it does. Uh, it, it, and it happens to some people and it never happens to others. But it's, it's a process, and it ain't changed over the years. You, you start off in your hometown, you, you broaden out to maybe a little bit wider in your hometown, and then you broaden out to your state, you broaden out to the following three or four states, you broaden out to the whatever third of the United States you're on, and, and it, gra it gradually gets bigger and bigger. And eventually, if you're doing that and you get real good, and you get somebody's going to come up to you and say, hey, listen, I'd like you to record on my record label. Maybe. Uh, uh, or you may say, heck, I think I'll start my own. Which is another thing we need is one more label. <laughs> and no, that's okay. That's okay. I don't care. But it'll all happen to you eventually. Take, you know, don't, don't rush yourself. Don't rush yourself. Um, if I can, on the choreography thing Jerry was doing a while ago, because we had some people looking weird on that when he said the dosido -si -do three quarters. Uh, general rule of thumb a dosido -si -do three quarter, a regular dosido -si -do three quarter puts you in a left handed wave. If you sashay the centers, that puts you in a two-face line. Okay, a left do -si do or a seesaw, three-quarters, throws you into a right-handed wave. Now, that's the kind of material that the dancers can dance, and it's different, but it's not that difficult. They'll get, they, they may bobble the first time. When you say do -si do three-quarters, and they're already, three, you know, they're already halfway into their Hungarian swing. Uh, but eventually, they're going to say, yeah, and then they, they see it. Once they see that, a light goes off, and they don't miss it again the rest of the night. That's the kind of material that you need 
scattered throughout your, your tip. At the same, same token now, you do need a little bit of meat along with the, the mashed potatoes. Somebody wake Rich up. Tap him, Joe. There you go. This is good stuff, son. You'll need this later on. <laughs> For the benefit of the tape, Rich had gone to sleep. I'm sorry it embarrassed John. I'm sorry, Jeff. Anyway, a lot of the good things that you want to happen to you will happen to you. Some of you will never do a festival in your life. Some of you will. It's, and trust me, it ain't no big thing. Uh, it, it, it don't mean just because you tr someone travels or they do festivals and you don't it doesn't mean that one is necessarily a better caller than the other it means that one's a different caller than the other you will find that typically and not in all situations but typically most good quote festival callers you would find would be good club callers if they were there uh, because they have the tools they've applied the tools the only difference is the callers that aren't doing it yet aren't applying all of the tools. Some guys have time to do it, some guys don't. But we all have the tools to do it. The tools are there. You've got to sit down and learn your craft. You've got to learn how to do these calls. The bottom line, if you're going to be a successful caller in today's market, the way the choreography has changed in the last few years, you have got to be able to put calls together. And you ain't going to get by with square through, swing through, boy run, bend the line right and left through all night. Nor are you going to get by with head square through, relay the deucey all night. If I can give you a prime example, I did a dance recently. I won't say where or with whom. I worked with a, another caller and we had a floor and I was and I was telling I guess somebody yesterday, the session we did on the extended applications yesterday was, was such a treat because Jerry and I both called. We use that a lot. You know, both of us do. We try to do calls that you don't normally do. Jerry called wheel around a while ago from from the from the Ferris wheel. I called that same sequence of from a left-handed two-face line Ferris wheel in the centers. Or I did. I did I'm sorry. I did a regular uh, wheel and deal, and the centers wheel around, and the floor looked at me like I'd gone bananas. Uh, so I workshopped wheel around at a plus dance, and. Uh, the floor couldn't dance it. Later on, about three tips, four tips later, the other caller I was working with said, well, it's time to do the A1 tip now. Now, there was, there was about 14 squares at the dance. Of those 14 squares, eight of them squared up for an A1 tip. And the A1 was heads past the ocean, chain reaction, boys run, square through three, out man left. Or something, something to that, something to that effect. There and that's really not dancing, you guys. And, and you're not going to be successful if you want to go on and on in your calling. You're not going to be successful if that's your method of calling. If you rely on calls like Ducey or Chain Reaction or Relay Your Wing Ding uh, or Flip Your Widget to make your dance interesting and make your dance good, you're not going to get far in today's choreographic world. Twenty years ago, you could because that was the way traveling callers did and festival callers did. Every festival caller came into town had a new figure. One or two. Today's, today's callers, you don't see that now. You're seeing the trend now change towards more choreographic content. So that instead of using a relay your wing ding or flip your widget or whatever, you're now seeing callers do things like they call eight chain two. When's the last time you did a dance? So you can make your dance interesting by something like, when's the last time in your normal dance, mainstream or plus or advanced, that you called from a box eight chain two? Not in a singing call, but in your hash. Not to, a, not to a get out, but just to call it. Calls like that that we don't normally use, dancers can dance. We don't give it to them, and it makes a whole different dance. When's the last time you called lines of four, pass through, wheel and deal, and the centers wheel around? You know, many, many callers don't. And it's great material. It's great material. Jerry? Uh, the figure, I don't know, was any was some of you at the dance last night? Upstairs, the figure that I used, I've take, I, I just took that on as a, a little test this year. For a whole year, I said I'm going to I'm going to call that. I haven't called Relay of the Ducey all year. I want to call that instead. I was in singing calls, and you know what I have, to, and that's plain plain vanilla now, standard application. 
Jerry, what was that figure? Head square through four. Eight chain four. Do si do. Spin chain through. Girl circulate once. Swing your corner and promenade home. Nobody can do it. The floor has broken down at every festival I've done all year long. They can't do it. I have to treat that as just as I would recycle with the girl on the end of the wave. I have to go through, if I'm going to do that, singing call. I first, I, you know, I'll, I'll check them out on it in, in my hash to see if they can do it. They can't do it. Callers are not using 8 chain 4. Callers aren't using spin chain through. The majority of callers today are using relay the deucey and track 2 instead. So I treat it like that. I go back, I show them the components, I tell them, hey, you got a courtesy turn on, on the outside on 8 chain figures. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's right. They were, they were neat. That's what they do. They do. And spin chain through. I swear, some of them have never had it. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. I, it's a war zone. When it, when it comes to this being a, a festival caller and traveling nationally, I'm telling you, it's a war zone. I have no idea what, what dancers know and what they don't know today. Seems like everybody's got their own list of calls that they're calling. And uh, it's, it, makes, it makes the job tough. Yeah, we're, we're finding that you have to adjust your style of calling. Not necessarily, uh, well, including content, but you have to adjust your entire style depending on the area of the country you're in now. And that wasn't the case, you know, five or six, seven years ago. You pretty much called the same everywhere. Uh, now it's you, you call a little different in in Kansas City than you do in Los Angeles, and you call a little different in Los Angeles than you do in San Francisco, and you call a little different in San Francisco than you do in Denver. Uh, little little differences, but it's enough that it can really upset the flow of your dance. We had a question back here, sir. Come up here, and we'll give you a microphone, or we'll send Jerry back there with a microphone to way. you, because that's that's the kind of guys we are. Nice, Jerry. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that Mark Moss from Tempe, Arizona. Just wanted to mention that uh, on that spin chain through, since that's a mainstream call, if you're at a mainstream dance and you call that, it'll happen naturally, no problem. But chances are you'll be at a plus club. You call that, you need to give them some forewarning. So you say something like, mainstream alert, spin chain through. With a little bit of words like that, they'll think, they will. if you say spin chain through, they're going to try to do spin chain the gears or something because they hear spin chain and they just go off doing it. But that little bit little bit note, mainstream alert, which really happens. Yeah. Excellent point. You can be very successful at large dances, especially if the dance is advertised plus. Uh, who did it? If the dance is advertised plus, you find that you can be very successful using some creative mainstream material. Try cutting that one off, see if that fixes it. Guess not. Uh, you can be very effective just using some creative mainstream material because these guys aren't used to seeing it. For some reason, you're right. Once we start dancing plus, we forget about mainstream. We forget those calls because we were taught wheel around. We were taught years ago. We were taught cross trail through, perhaps. You know, we, you know, we were taught fan the top. But for some reason, we get into plus, we forget those, and, and now we use Relay the Deucey. To make yourself more appealing than the next caller, why be just like everybody else? Why get in and head square through and Relay the Deucey and spin chain exchange the gears and, and load the boat? Why be like every, That's what everybody else is doing. Why, If you want to sell yourself to a dance or to a festival, you've got to be different. Uh, you can't be like another caller because you will never be as good as the caller that you're emulating. You, the best you can ever be, if you're trying to copy Jerry's story, the best you'll ever be is number two, cause there ain't, and even if you're a better caller, because there's nobody that can do Jerry's story better than Jerry's story. So the best you're going to be is a copy doing him. So work out your own stuff. Get, get Use some original, uh, try to be as original as you can. It takes work. It means that you got to sit home and move some checkers. Or you may have to put a tape in the car and listen to some songs and go over them. Um, but it's worth it in the end. We have a question with the microphone that doesn't work. We got it? Oh, there. we yeah, a comment and a question. Comment is, maybe uh, you guys... Who are you? 
I'm Bill Martin. Uh, I'm the guy that uh, Johnny Preston admires the most. Where's Johnny? <clears throat> you see, he won't do duets with me. John won't do duets because he don't sing good enough. Where is he? I saw him standing back here while we were. Is he? Okay, great. I have to comment. Uh, the reason we don't get through Spin Shane through, it may be a perfect example that the f list is too long, because with the long list and if you're Dan calling plus, uh, if you try to use everything on the list, it becomes a kind of maybe a pretty boring dance. You know, you don't have the opportunity to expand some of the things like you're talking about. Now, the question is, on some of the things that you do, for example, you did that uh, the boys trade to a reverse the flutter. Now, when you you don't necessarily cite that, have you learned? Do you use equivalents? You know, well, I know you stole it. We all steal. But my question is, is you memorize parts instead of tips? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that was uh, that was necessarily a memorized routine. That was just. Uh, I, now I don't know because I no, stole I, had, it, I stole it from you. I had no idea where they where they were out on the floor. You know. Yeah, that's exactly right. Extempo, that extempo thing, yeah. Uh, hey, got one over here. You want to run over there? You want me to run this time? While we're answering this question, let me let me give something to you while we get to this question, because this is I, I I researched this from somebody. This is applicable in a club atmosphere. It's applicable in a festival atmosphere, any atmosphere. It's a little thing on it says the poor teacher, and since we're all teachers, it says the poor teacher tells, the fair teacher explains. The good teacher demonstrates, but the great teacher inspires. It, kind of good words to live by, if you think. Anyway, we have one question over here. Uh, yeah, Jeff Palmer, Colorado Springs. Uh, part of the problem I'm having as a local club caller is uh, the fact that people that we were used to getting out a couple of three times, even three times a week sometimes, are now either dead or <laughs> retired and moved on, and the newer ones we're getting don't have enough time to come out to our club dances that many times a week. They'll dedicate maybe two nights a month to dancing, and the rest of the time they're doing other things, so it's a little hard to keep them proficient at some things like that all the time, like when you guys come in, and they say, well, how come they can't do that? Well, maybe we haven't had a chance to keep them proficient at that, but it's also an advantage because sometimes stuff's new all the time. Um, you know how you should really treat that stuff? Is, is like a quarterly selection. Don't expect the dancers to remember it. You know, I mean, you're going to show it to them and they're going to have fun with it. If, if they get to be better dancers because of it, that's a byproduct. You know, and it equalized your floor as well. If you had advanced dancers there and, and plus dancers there and mainstream dancers there, recycle with the girl on the end of the wave probably would fit the bill on all three situations. Unfortunately, and fortunately, if you're if, if you're able to to work that angle of choreography, it, it's a very powerful tool. But but yes, yeah, that's okay. Treat it like a quarterly selection. Come back next week, and I'll show you how to do something else. And if you want to do that recycle again, then have to you go through the whole presentation of it, and it don't take long. Well, you've seen how long it takes. A couple minutes, and you can get them doing pretty much whatever you want. Uh, we're about actually we're a little over time. Uh, we'll take you. You got another question? We oh, no, well, make him okay. make him run over there. He's, he yeah, needs I'm the exercise. The bar this time. We'll do this last question, and there's no more. Um, we'll get ready for the. I just want Mark Mons again, Tempe. I just wanted to mention that uh, on that wheel around, Tony, you had had problems with that. If you, since a lot of people do a wheel around with on a promenade, and they'll say like head couples wheel around or every other couple wheel around. If you'd have done that a couple of times prior to doing that in the center, I think wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't, wouldn't have helped. helped. You know, you wheel around. That's that's usually what I try to do. Is yeah. just try to. I, f I find that I find that even though if I if I practice promenading in the hits, wheel around, just because of the way the formation, where you, where you arrive at that formation, where you're coming into that, uh, coming into the center after the wheel and deal, it the people. Although you flow into it, the people bobble somewhat. Anyway, um, we hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you all very very much. What's it's been a great convention, hasn't it? We quit. Good Do we, wait, a minute, well, well, wait a minute. I mean, we don't go to five. We go to. I thought we went to four forty-five. Are we go to five? Oh, good. Well then, Let's take back the applause. Take back the applause. We go. I thought it went to four forty-five. Yeah, we quit it. We quit at four forty-five. The, the sessions are not. Huh?
Well, then, we'll, we'll entertain... Any more questions? We'll entertain questions from the floor. If there's no questions, uh, everybody... Uh, oh, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. So I was going to let everybody leave, but Bob Pointer. Brenda Uhala from Vancouver, B.C. Uh, you mentioned that the wheel around practicing from lines isn't going to help. How would you go about, or from promenade? I promenade. Mean. No, because because of the difference in the formation, it's it's so foreign to the people to do a, a, a and that's why I used it. Okay, I, I, um, I find that they get it the second time. I don't have to teach it. In fact, I say pass the wheel and deal, center wheel around. Hey, be sure you face the ones behind you. That's the best thing. To say. Yeah. Uh, going over here. I feel like Donahue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, this is Clyde Cullings, Franken with Michigan. Uh, I'd like to. What what advice would you have? You have if for the callers who are going to get one shot at a festival, one tip, uh, and you you want to do your best. And what happens? I th I think it t really takes a lot of judgment. Number one, I'd keep it simple, but different. And those two things combined, you're going to have a nice tip. If you want to just have something a little different that you can make sure that, that you know the, the presentation skills required to, to do the, to pull it off. But keep it simple. You want to give it your best shot. And you don't want to get in too far over your head there. So if it's a one-shot deal, you're going to get up there. Keep it simple. Let them dance. Put the wind in their face. If you got a little trick that you can show them and with, that you are positive you can get 100% success rate out of, go for it. If not, just just do some nice choreography. The uh, dancers always love that. Just dancing smooth, going through the, the calls, playing vanilla, mixing it up a little bit here and there, stacking a few calls together, and a nice singing call. Uh, and it's, it's smart to have two singing calls. You, you should have one that's kind of like a relaxer in case the guy before you did a real rip roar, because you want to be different than the guy before you. If he did a, a Whatever this the popular song, you know, the jumping up and down, screaming. Do a pretty one so that your tip is different. But now, if the other guy did a slow one, then you need a one a little up tempo tune so that your your tip is different. And people remember your singing call because that's the last thing they hear. Uh, Johnny Preston has a question now. Probably has to do with his idol. <laughs> Actually, I just had a comment, and I don't know. You might have already touched on this. I had to leave for a part of. <laughs> Um, one leaves, one falls asleep. <laughs> well, that's why I left, so I wouldn't fall asleep. <laughs> and I didn't mean that. I, it's the stress that's been on me. Um, I, like I said, I don't know whether you talked about this, but the one thing that I found as a festival, uh, as a festival caller is that uh, a festival is no place to start trying material out. Did you talk about that? I never, ever call into something that I don't already know how to get out of. No, there's no time to be experimenting or anything. Everything that I do is tried and true. I already know it's going to work, and I already know it's, that everybody's going to be able to do it. Yeah. As, a, as a general Thanks, rule, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard the old axiom about traveling callers call the same dance every night. That is true to a point. As a general rule, I have a format that I follow for a, a special dance or for a festival, that pretty much I'm going to do the same song or one similar to it at a particular portion of the evening. I'm going to have the same material each tip. If, if I have a workshop tip, uh, I'm going to workshop a call that I have already workshopped before. It's not going to be a call that I've never seen. Uh, I pretty much have a basic outline of, of each tip of where I'm going with it so that I'm not trying anything new and different at a festival because he's at John's absolutely right uh, in front of a large floor is definitely not the place you